and in the thinking of those Near Eastern peoples, the Babylonian gods had been victorious over the God of the Jews, vanquishing the Lord just as the Babylonian army had vanquished the people. And the Babylonians were not hesitant of reminding the Jews of this. So those two generations spent in exile were a time of doubting, wondering, and despairing. Where is our God, and what's he up to? Gathered there in a rebuilt Jerusalem, gathered then as a newly freed community, able to worship God in their own way, in their own place, the Jews bowed down in eager anticipation for the reading from the book of the law of God ready to hear the word of the Lord. When that word was given, when that word was heard, the people rejoiced with jubilant tears that their God's presence was once again known to them. They wept with joy at the presence of their God in the midst of his word. Now to get at how the hearing of God's law proclaimed to them would be the joyous reception of promise. I have to tell you a story, a familiar one, about Ole's days as a cab driver. One night, Ole had a chance to drive the Pope. The Pope struck up a conversation with Ole while, and convinced Ole that he should let the Pope drive. While Ole sat in back, they switched places. And while... Uh, they switched places, and the Pope enjoyed being behind the wheel until he got pulled over by an officer for speeding. After calling in the stop, the officer approached the taxi. The Pope asked, what's wrong? Seeing that the driver was indeed the Pope, the officer excused himself and sent the taxi on its way. Then he went and reported in on the results of the stop. And he was asked who the taxi's fare was. Who was its passenger? And the officer replied, I don't know, but it must have been somebody important. He had the Pope for a driver. <laughs> <laughs> Something similar can be said in regard to the law. Who does it benefit? It must be somebody important because God is the giver. In order to receive God's law as promise, we must know that its purpose is to see to it that we and our neighbors get the fruits of this creation delivered to us. When the law and the gospel are held together, inseparable but properly distinguished the law is kept in its place right here down to earth when the law is kept in its place there are joyous songs written to it like psalm 19 where it declares the heavens are telling the glory of god and the firmament proclaims his handiwork the law of the lord is perfect reviving the soul Held in its place, the law delivers three promises. The first of these promises comes right at the beginning of the covenant that God made with Moses. Right there as a prologue to the book of the law of Moses. Right there in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 stands God's declarative word, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no others. No doubt about it. Your God is a God who chooses you. The second of these promises comes because God orders the entire world. 
He is the one who sets rulers and governments in their places. Because our neighbors are obedient to the law, well, mostly they're obedient to the law. Because our neighbors are obedient, we can trust that our families will be places of love and nurture, that our streets will be free of overt violence, that our property, our relationships, and our reputations will be protected. The law orders the world. The third of these promises comes because the law has an end. That is, it has both a termination and a goal, which are in Christ Jesus our Lord. As we are baptized into his death and resurrection, we receive the promise that one day, one day, the, law, the demands of the law will be fulfilled. Not by obedience, but by our very life and being in the new creation. While we wait for that day, we have that fulfillment right now as faith in Christ. In the synagogue at Nazareth, our Lord Jesus declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed grow, go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him, and then he said to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It's enough to bring tears to your eyes. Thanks be to God. Amen.